just a quick reminder before we start our meeting, please uh, give us your name, even though we can see you, but for the record, uh, please address with your name and then uh, speak so we all know who's talking and let's try real hard not to um, talk over each other. So when it's recorded, it uh, picks it up better. Okay, I would like to call to order our public hearing Monday, a virtual via Zoom public hearing or via teleconference. Monday, July 13th, 2020, 7.30 p.m. and it's virtual. The seating of members, we will see our regular members, Kim Tester, Elaine Curley, Alan Jackson, Dave Miller, Alan Johnson, I'm sorry. I knew I was gonna do that so sooner or later. <laughs> it's the first time. Yeah, I did pretty good. And myself, Jim Conway. <clears throat> now, at this time, if there's anybody that is seated that has any type of conflict with this proposed regulation for Zone D and feels they need to recuse themselves, this is the time to do it. If everybody feels there's no need to recuse, we're good to go. Thank you. Um, we have a petition before us by Elliot Davis to amend the Roxbury Zoning Regulations, Section 4.7.9.2B, 20.30, and 20.89 regarding craft breweries, distilleries, and wineries allowed by special permit in business zone D. Uh, the legal notice was published in the Voices on Wednesday, July 1st, and on July 8th, 2020. The Roxbury Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, July 13th, 2020, at 7.30 p.m. via teleconference. The purpose of this hearing is to receive public comment on proposed tax amendments to the Roxbury Zoning Regulations as petitioned by Elliot Davis, owner of Mine Hill Distillery, LLC, 5 Mine Hill Road, Roxbury, Connecticut. The proposed amendments are to sections 4.7.9.2B, 20.30 and 20.89 regarding craft breweries, distilleries, and wineries allowed by special permit in business zone D. The proposed reflect changes in Connecticut liquor laws to allow by special permit certain aspects of the new craft cafe state law license available to liquor manufacturers included limited on-premise sale and consumption of alcohol that is primarily produced on site. The proposed also allow more flexibility and location of tasting room accessory uses and provide revised definition of alcoholic liquor that may be produced under this special permit in Zone D. This is a general amendment to craft breweries, distilleries, and wineries use standards and is not site specific for any particular property. If the amendment is adopted, a special permit or special permit modification would have to be granted to carry out any of the new or revised uses allowed by this amendment. The proposed amendments are on trial. The proposed okay. amendments are on file in Roxbury Town Clerk's Office and Roxbury Land Use Office and can be viewed on the Roxbury Town of Roxbury website. At this hearing, Interested persons may access the meeting via Zoom. Uh, Roxbury Zoning Commission, James Conway, Chairman. The Roxbury Town Clerk was noticed June 1st, 2020. Um, basically, the notice is the same as what I just read, 
So I will not continue to read it, it's lengthy, but it's the exact same thing. Notice our town clerk. Kim, you want to do the uh, notice to the Planning Commission? Sure. Um, may, I, may I interrupt with a question? Did, did we not um, um, review the minutes and accept the minutes? That's in the regular meeting next. After okay, the thank, you. Favor. thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, this is to... Um, Peter Fields, Chairman, Roxbury Planning Commission. Uh, this notice was sent June 1st, 2020. And it's, uh, somebody needs to mute. Everyone should mute themselves um, until they're going to speak. Yeah, we have a lot of background noise here for some reason. Yeah. So there's two people on telephone and you should mute yourself. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Jim, this says the exact same thing uh, that you just read. Correct. So, I'm just going to make that note that um, this was sent to the Planning Commission on June 1st. There was a response, which Correct. I'll read from the Planning Commission that was sent to the Roxbury Zoning Commission on June 18, 2020. At a regular meeting of the Roxbury Planning Commission held June 11, 2020, the Commission reviewed a referral from the Zoning Commission proposing amendments to the Roxbury Zoning um, relations pertaining to craft breweries, distilleries, and wineries. On May 11, 2020, the Zoning Commission accepted <clears throat> a petition from Elliot Davis of Mine Hill Distillery to amend Roxbury Zoning Regulations Sections 4.7.9.2b, 20.30, and 20.89 regarding craft breweries, distilleries, and wineries allowed by special permit and business zone D to reflect changes in the Connecticut liquor laws. The proposed amendments will allow by special permit a craft cafe license for the on-premises sale and consumption of alcohol that is primarily produced on site, more flexibility and location of tasting room accessory uses and revises the definition of alcoholic liquor. The commission reviewed the proposed text changes and agreed they were compatible with the plan of conservation and development. Thank you for referring proposed amendments to the Roxbury Zoning Regulations to the Planning Commission for review and comment. Peter Filos, Chairman, Roxbury Planning Commission. Thank you. And it went to the public notice registry on June 15th of 2020. The same text that uh, we all heard. The public notice registry. Um, Karen has a list uh, that she emails this to, but they were noticed as well. And Planning Agency, Northwest Hills Council of Governments, Jocelyn, and I'll see what we have for a response. <clears throat> Date received, 518. Um, Comment from the Northwest Hills Council of Government has re reviewed this referral and finds no apparent conflict with regional plans and policies or the known concerns of neighboring towns. That was the Northwest Hills Council of Governments. Western Connecticut Council of Governments. And see if they got a response. I think we got one from all of them this time. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, we got one from, <laughs> from uh, Western Connecticut Council of Governments. This was, they received this May 18th. Um, comments starts off with the opinion of West Cog staff is that the proposal is of local interest with minimal intermunicipal impact, therefore, it is not being forwarded to adjacent municipalities and the regional staff is making no comment. Uh, Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments. 
response. Staff recommendation, Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments. Staff finds the proposed text amendment to Roxbury zoning regulations to be not regionally significant and have no apparent intermunicipal impact. I believe that is all of them. Yes, it is. All right. Just do a little housekeeping. At this time, um, I would open it to public comment. Did we receive Karen, John, uh, office? Did we receive any written comments? No, we did not. Okay, thank you. We have some people on the phone. I don't know if they're would like to comment, but right now is the time. I suppose we have, it appears, we have no public input or questions. I can comment. Barbara. Barbara Henry, Barbara Henry for Selectman. Um, I am very much in favor of seeing this pass. I think that I go along with what all the COGS have said and, um, and that you as a, a board or commission um, has looked into and agreed upon, not formally, but um, I would hope that we would support this and to allow this business to continue to um, grow along with the state guidelines. <clears throat> okay, I think um, we've given Margaret. I think it's a good idea too. Thank you, Margaret. You're welcome. All right, with that, I think we've given everybody ample time to comment. I would entertain a motion and once we close this public hearing, there's nothing to be added or discussed. Um, um, Elaine Curley here. Um, I noticed that there's a letter from Elia Davis in the regular packet, but I don't see it here in the packet for special permit. Am I incorrect? Slightly. It um, starts out saying, I've spent four months working on this project in front of zoning, that letter. Uh, uh, I, I hate to toggle back and forth. Elaine, excuse me, um, that letter goes with the item that Elliot will present at the regular meeting. I see, thank you for clarifying. With um, his request to amend his special permit. So okay, thank you for clarifying. Like yep. very okay. With that, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I motion to close the public hearing. I will second Elaine Curley. Oh, Kim Tester, sorry. Kim, Kim and Elaine. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The public hearing is closed. Thank you. All right, we might as well move right on to our um, regular meeting. I would like to call to order the regular meeting of the Roxbury Zoning Commission via Zoom or via teleconference, Monday, July 13th, 2020 at 7.45 p.m. <clears throat> Seating of members, 
we will seat our regular members, Kim Tester, Lane Curley, Alan Johnson, Dave Miller. Dave, still here? Uh, you may have David. hit the wrong button. <laughs> uh, David, before I seat you, I need to make sure you're with us. I have Kim, Elaine, Alan, and myself. We should probably each say present. John, okay. Cody, Jim, I'm, I'll text Dave right now. Thank you. you think Dave didn't realize that there was a meeting following the hearing? Well, we'll... no, I think it's by techn technology. <laughs> we got Bill coming on. Uh, it's John, John Cody. I just talked to Dave. He uh, dropped. He's trying to log back in right now. Oh, okay. Give him a minute. Hi, Bill. Bill. Hi, how are you? Only took me about an hour and a half to get on this thing, but I oh dear, I persevered. You missed Thank a special you. meeting. What dedication! Good Thank job. you. <laughs> Did the Zoom um, link not work for you? I it was in a document. I needed to just to click on it. I had to. It just didn't work with the document. Oh, sorry about that. Anyway, here I am. <clears throat> Bill, you can in in the future you can cut and paste. No, I don't know how to do that either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll I, be we'll be back live and in person at some point. I, I may, but I can't. So. All right, are we going to move on? You'll need to seat someone for Dave if you do. Yes, I know. But, um, we're going to give him another minute or? Yeah, it's only been, we're doing okay. Yeah, it's still early. <clears throat> Jim, uh, John, should I uh, text Dave the phone number to call in in case he can't get the video working? Sure, try, try anything, yeah. Um, I'm afraid to go for that because if I click off this screen, I'll probably be just like Dave. I can, um, I can, John, I can do it if you want. You, know, you got the number? Everybody's got it. There he is. All ready. Ah. Is he? I guess. There he is. Yep. Okay, I'm going again. Hey, Dave, you're back. Woo, Dave. Okay. We will start. Call to order our regular meeting at 7.49. Seating of members, our regular members, Kim Tester, Elaine Curley, Alan Johnson, Dave Miller, and myself, Jim Conway. Uh, public comment on our regular meeting, we have none. <clears throat> we have the minutes of the June 8th meeting that we need to approve. <clears throat> this is the May 11th. No, what is this? Uh, June, June 8th. Oh, did I put the wrong, put the wrong I, one? 
I have May 11. I put the wrong date. one. No, you put the right one, Karen. Oh, I, I did? Have... You have yes. it? Yeah. I put the wrong one in my packet. <laughs> one email down is the right one. Okay. Oh, the one that went with the um, agendas. You're right. Check today. Apologize for that. So, what's um, May 11? Is that that's, that's in error, Kim. It should be June. I mean, it should, this, the contents is the same, right? This is what we did last time. No, June, the June minutes um, were emailed to everybody, but oh. you ac I accidentally put the wrong one in your packet today. Oh, God. Okay. I know. Sorry. No. It's okay. Uh -oh. I'm going to try going outside. See if the... <coughs> put that off till next month. Without yeah, I, should, I, think I was going to say, do you want to approve these next month? We can do that. Okay. Yeah. So every, I believe everybody should have the opportunity to review the minutes from June eighth. Right. And if and if not, all seated members have that opportunity to review. We can table them till next month. Uh, I can read through it in like two seconds. So if it's up to you, to chart, whatever you. Did everyone else see them when they came to them online? Mm -hmm. Everybody's good. Elaine is here. Elaine's going to abstain from the minute approval. Were you not here last month, Elaine? Correct. Okay. And David Miller, I'll abstain. I wasn't at the last meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. And I didn't receive a copy of the minutes either. I didn't receive any packet. No, there were no, no packages, but there was an email to you with the agendas and the minutes that went out last Friday. So that's what I'm talking about. It's in yeah. the I got the agenda, not the minutes. There should have been two agendas and the set of uh, um, minutes. Hmm. There well, was, I, you didn't get it? There were three attachments to that. No, but it could have been my fault. Okay, let's, um, I'd like a motion to table the approval of the June yeah, that's, that's easier. So everybody will have the opportunity to read them and then I want to make sure this is done correctly. Sure. I, I motion to table the uh, June uh, meeting minutes till the next meeting in August. I second the motion. Move is that and Alan? Seconded. Alan Johnson. Okay, thanks Alan. Oh, Kim Tester. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Well, uh, everybody gets a chance. Get a chance to read through them, and we will discuss them next month. Thank okay. you. All right. Uh, item five: discussion following public hearing of petition by Elliot Davis to amend zoning regulations pertaining to craft breweries. And does anybody, uh, this is basically a regulation for the, obviously the entire zone. Uh, it's not specific to any one property at this right now. Um, it is by special permit to apply for. So right now it's just uh, relatively simple for zone D. As Kim Tester, um I'm in favor of um, moving along with it. I think it brings it up to the state. You know, it's the state require or uh, opportunity for the state to make this investment. And I think if we stay in line with what the state proposes. So I'm um, Elaine? I'd like to add, so this goes with the land. This, this special permit goes with the land? This isn't a special permit. No. This oh, is it, a, I mean the amendment. This goes with the entire zone D. Okay. The entire business zone D. Um, yeah, I read through earlier.
Alan? I, I think it's, I'm, I'm in favor of it. Okay, David? Yeah, I'm in favor of it. I think it goes along business district and within the rules of the state of Connecticut, they seem to think that this is a, uh, a, a normal um, expansion or use of that type of business. So I'm in favor of it. And I also am in favor because uh, <clears throat> my reasoning is breweries and wineries have been doing this since it started. They've always had the opportunity to sell their product. And what this is doing is allowing distilleries to be on the same playing field as breweries and wineries to sell the product they produce. And um, it's part of the, the business. And uh, so I'm in favor of it. May I? Well, when you're done, are you done, Jim? No, go ahead, Elaine. Okay, Elaine Curley. I would like to um, acknowledge that um, this allows for not only breweries and wineries and distilleries, this potentially becomes um, the function of a restaurant where food can be brought in to be served as in Woodbury Brewing Company. Woodbury Brewing Company has partnered with uh, a new list so that all the food served, you can order food and it can be brought in and people can sit and hang out and listen to music and buy the alcoholic product. Is everybody aware that this, what, what we are amending could allow for a full functioning um, night spot, restaurant, etc. I just want to clarify because I missed last month. Right. Basically, We're my understanding is the state requires food to be available or nearby. Um, that can be anything from a bag of chips to a pizza. Food has to be part of this uh, serving of alcohol. Yeah, I just, I'm asking if the commission understands what this potentially can look like. It, it ceases to be a distillery and allows for it to become a multifunctional venue. We've got, uh, this is by special permit when yep. someone applies for this. Yeah. In the application for this, within the special permit, we will pretty much lay out uh, the groundwork as to what we're going to allow, where we're going to allow it, and how we're going to allow it. Okay. Um, Jim, am I allowed to? Am I allowed to talk? Uh, not, sorry, Elliot. No, this is our meeting now. Okay. Um, the public comment part is over. Um, I was just going to point people to the last sentence of 28. Elliot, sorry, Elliot. Now, next month when you come with your special permit okay. application, we will ask you a lot of questions. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Jim, David Miller. David. Uh, yeah, I think it was quite clear uh, earlier on that the state mandated food would be there and either they could bring in food um, and we'll eat. I have a problem with that. I have to eat if you're going to have a drink, and um, I I don't have a problem if uh, if someone later on in another place, such as down at Rag Brothers, were to have a restaurant that served alcohol. I, I just um, you know I've I've eaten dinner in Woodbury and New Milford and Southbury at different places. We kind of losing you, Dave. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think every every application is going to be slightly different. If there's going to be, like Elaine's concern, there would have to be kitchens, and we don't have a kit. Not everyone's going to have a kitchen. Um, it's going to be somewhat um, regulated as to their facility, um, as far as food. David Miller's gone. David's gone. I think well, we have to wait till he comes back. Or pause. Yeah, at least get him back to 
so we can take a vote. <clears throat> um, John, can you get on this again for us? Oh, John's muted too. I heard you, Jim. I texted him. I'll give him a buzz right now just to make sure. Okay, thank you. All right. Oh, Dave, I just called him. Dave, John Cody. Dave said he's trying again. Um, he could drive over here if you want him to jump on or something, or is it easier for him to call in? I don't know what would be the best. <laughs> well, I don't know the legalities, but all our alternates have listened to the whole thing start to finish. I think I could seat an alternate in his place um, do you have enough people to take a vote? Do you have over a quorum so you could vote and just leave him absent for the moment, maybe? We've got four of us. That's a quorum. Yeah, that might, that might be cleaner. That's, that's Kim. Any way uh, you feel you want to do it, we can go with the four of us. Um, I think we know his vote anyway, so if you guys want to hold your vote and I can tell him to drive over here and he can jump on. It's not like his vote's going to be... Why didn't you just get on the get on call in on the phone and skip the video part yeah does someone have the phone number yep mm -hmm. you ready yeah fire away 929-205-6099 all right hi it's candy he needs the meeting id number though right i don't think so We have to talk Laura into hanging around and help him every time he needs to get on. <laughs> Two heads are better than one. He should have it. I texted him and went through. Let's see. All right, I'm, uh, I think we'll entertain a motion <clears throat> for the, to amend, or for the uh, petition for zone D. And we'll just go with the four of us. So are we voting on um, 477? Correct. It is 4.7.9.2B. Addition. Yes. To, yeah. Alcoholic beverages produced on site may be provided as free tastings with or without known and blah, blah, blah. All of, uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, Jim, i am got on now finally. Thank you. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the regulation for business zone D. You have to state the section numbers or anything? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, 4.7.9.2B and definition 
3.30 and definition 20.89. Okay, um, may I interrupt please, Elaine Curley? The page I'm looking at, uh, page, am I on five of six because it's saying regulation 4.7.7, 2A, 2B. Karen, can you help me out? Am I on the wrong page completely? Well, I'm taking this from the public notice. Okay, so I'm in the regular meeting. The page, th page five is telling me Mine Hill Distillery Modification of Special Permit Application Statement of Use. That's, no. that, that's not it. We haven't gotten to that yet. Okay, so. That's what I was talking about. Elliot's going to present tonight. Okay, but meeting. what Jim is saying, I don't have that paperwork in front of me. That was in the public hearing. And oh, okay, thank you. The amendment to the zoning regs. It's a full page with a lot of red on it. Yeah, I did read it, but I didn't see it in the, so I have to go back. Yeah, Sorry. It's, it's in the public hearing material. Sorry. I know it's a little confusing because there's two different things we're doing. Yeah, I get it. I'm just a little slow. Thank you for clarifying. No problem. All right, so uh, this is Kim. So you made the motion? I made the motion, yes. I'm going to second. It's been motioned and second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I believe we pretty much gave, Karen, we pretty much gave our uh, reasonings earlier. So I think we're good to go. I didn't, I guess I have to add my reason that I find no um, obvious reason to oppose it according to the regulations. Okay. I, it probably would be better if we um, just ran through that again, I think. Okay. All right. Um, we do Kim? have one dissenting vote. Kim, reason? Yeah, this is Kim Tester. Um, I. Uh, I'm in favor because it it's good for business, um, but also it also it uh, brings it up to the Connecticut state statutes uh, and their regulations. And I think it's for the town to follow suit and be current. Thank you, Elaine. I um, have um, voted in uh, for it because I can. I've looked at the regs, I've looked, I, there's no obvious reason for me to decline it. <clears throat> Thank you. Alan? It seems to be a reasonable request and it, <clears throat> it kind of clarifies and makes it a more viable business. Thank you. Viable proposition. David? It, it seems to me to be a reasonable request um, for a business that is in the business zone. And I think it will be an asset to the town of Roxbury uh, to have a business that's successful. So I'm in favor of it. Thank you. And uh, I, I as well uh, am in favor of the uh, regulation for business zone D. It just brings uh, a distillery up to the same playing field as breweries and wineries. Okay, Karen, I would say that's unanimous. I would agree. Thank you. That was item five pertaining to craft breweries. Uh, now, at this point, we have an application by Mine Hill Distillery for a special permit to amend his special permit to allow him to exercise his right and sell alcohol for consumption. And what we do tonight is accept 
and the, per the application, the uh, statement of use, um, site plan we, we're going to forego because we've seen it numerous times and parking has not changed. Um, I don't have, Karen, does you have the uh, statement of use in front of you? I can flip back to it, yes. Okay, and uh, we've got all the notices for, do we have the notices? We haven't noticed yet for this. No, no, no. That would, if we um, choose to accept this tonight and then establish a public hearing date, and then you'll the notice. notices yeah. would start to be sent out again. Okay, um, but you have everything that's needed for this evening, the application complete for us to accept? I believe we do. We've got his um, amended application. Um, we have a cover letter introducing the, um, the complete idea of what he would like to do. And then we have an amended statement of use. And the fee has been paid. The fee has been paid. Okay, I've got, Karen, I got one question before we go forward. Uh, in the statement of use, are the hours listed for tastings as well as consumption on site? Um, you all have a copy of it in your packet, but let me just skim it quickly and see if I can answer that. Tastings can be offered daily from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. 11 a.m. starting on Sunday is what it says. <clears throat> Elliot, did you submit the one we discussed? Yeah, right afterwards to you and to everyone else. So it's, it actually reads, tastings and on-premise sale and consumption of alcohol can be offered daily from 10 to 8 or 11 to 8. So that was sent to you guys right after we talked. On Friday. Right. And it was highlighted. Correct. So Karen, do you, do you have that one? I don't believe I would believe I grabbed that one. Let me, I hope I don't lose you. I'm going to jump off and make sure, Karen, you got it. As well. Elliot, you amended the you first sent to me again on Friday? I did after my talk with Jim, to just okay. be more explicit. I'm sorry, I did not see that. No worries. Let me just uh, see if I can get it to you. Or if I saw it, I didn't realize it was different than what you had sent me earlier. Could you tell me what section that amendment's in, Elliot? Is it under 2B? Yes, it is. It's just the last bullet point. Okay. And it, 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 it inserts uh, the language, so it reads now, tastings and on-premise sale and consumption of alcohol can be offered daily from 10 to 8 or 11 to 8 on Sundays. Um, Correct. So Karen, so I sent it uh, on Friday the 10th to you, Jim, Karen, and John. Okay. And In Karen, I'll, I'll forward it to you again. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's the one, Karen, that's going to go with the application. Okay, got so it. Karen, it's just, it's gone to you at, at, at this point. Okay, and that's the only change is that That one was the only, it's only, oh, shit, how okay. do I get back? Uh, I'll get that I, corrected. Okay, I, I lost the video, but I can hear everyone, so I'm just going to keep it at that. We, we can, right. can see you. We can, we can, okay. we can still see you, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that's scary. All right, so everything seems to be in order for the commission to go forward and accept this application for the special permit and to schedule a public hearing, which we can schedule for the August meeting. Do I have a motion to accept this application? 
This is Kim Tester. I motion to accept the application from Mine Hill Distillery for a special permit. Do I have a second? David Miller. David Miller, I second the uh, yeah, application. Okay, it's been motioned and seconded to accept the application. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we accepted it. Um, I believe now I could use a motion to schedule a public hearing for our August meeting. Hey, this is Elaine Curley. I move to create a public hearing for the August meeting of the Rectory Zoning Commission um, for the consideration of uh, regulation 4.4.7 and the special permit to um, the distillery. Do I have a second? Date of that is August 10th, by the way. August, thank you. August 10th. And do I have a second? It's Kim Tester, I'll second. Kim, thanks. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Up, public hearing pertaining to this application, August 10th. Excellent. And I'll make sure I make the change in the uh, language. Correct. Yes. Thank you, guys. I don't. You don't need me anymore, do you? No, we're good. All right. Have a good night. Thank you, Elliot. Good night, Elliot. Thank you. Bye. All right. Uh, CEO report. Don. All right. Um, I'll go brief, as always. I'll start with the oldest first. Uh, Mark Lowe's screening. I reached out to him, and he got back to me saying that he is going to put up a fence. Uh, send me a picture of some trees that he's going to have milled for it. So at least we got some sort of progress with that. On that same note, I received an email from Dennis, Donald, his neighbor, inquiring about taking out a permit to finish the second story of his garage slash storage. Um, he's going to respond to me. He said I'm going to get an email from him explaining more, so we'll wait and see what that has to bring. Um, another one. There Garage 84 Wellers uh, originally came to me. It was, just say it, it was massive. Um, and I had issues with it because two things. One, Julie's husband's building it, and I had concern about the what that would look like if it was approved. Uh, I brought that up to Ed. I told him about the size and the scope of the thing, that it may be uh, controversial, something like that. And they revised it, and they brought it back. So right now the garage stands at 2,900 square feet parking for four cars. Um, it's big, but it's smaller than a main house. I don't really have an issue with signing off in it, on it at this point, but I wanted to bring your guys to your guys' attention. Is, is that the Colonial on the left going down the hill? Uh, you really can't see it. It's behind the gates. Um, on the, oh, okay. Down on the left-hand side. Okay. Um, and they, they moved, originally they had it close to the road. They moved it back. I don't I don't see any concern. The first one would have was basically 80 feet long, closer to the road. It was big. Um, now they're at 77 feet, but they took off the second story, took off a whole bunch of stuff to it. So it's, it, it, it should work just fine. Um, last but not least, I got an email today about a complaint against Mike Rice. Sorry. Uh, I haven't been up there. I was going to swing up there later on this afternoon, but the day got away from me. Apparently, he has an open and closed sign for when he's doing business. Um, he'll put up an open sign, block his driveway, and the cars park on the road. Uh, the complainant said that um, they come over the hill, there's cars on the road, people don't get out of your way. They're rather upset about it. And they made allegations of um, all sorts of activities that are going on in all these different little buildings that he may have erected or something like that. So. Um, that's going to start my morning tomorrow. Um, within the last, within this month or last month, we had three new home applications. Um, it's busy. There's a lot of property being turned over. A ton of inquiries about property that has been bought and sold. What they can do with it as far as um, accessory structures and stuff like that. Um, again, we thought last year was good. This year should be a record number for for permits and 
applications and all that stuff. It, it's really kind of crazy down there. Um, hopefully you understood all that. I kind of ramble on pretty quick. <laughs> it's good. Thank you. Yeah. So, good. Thank you. Um, it's good to hear that things are uh, getting taken care of with Mark and Dennis and all that, you know. Yeah, yeah, slowly. <laughs> slowly, but it's going in the right direction. Yeah, wheels of justice turn slowly, right? Yeah. Okay, I, thank I you, can, John. I can verify cool. what John is saying because as soon as I clean up a pile of permits, John gives me another pile. Yeah. <laughs> it's been Excuse quite me. All right, uh, we'll continue on. Um, Excuse me, Jim, can you hear me? This is Ed Katie. Yes, go ahead, Ed. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, just wanted to let you know I was on the call. Uh, John, did you have any questions for me regarding that application for Mr. Swaya for 85 Waller's Bridge? Uh, now's not the time to talk about that. I mean, that's, yeah, I have the application. You're going to wetlands. Um, like I said, I'm going to sign off on that. Um, okay. No, I, I just wanted to make sure I, I didn't, I didn't hear you say that. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I said right. that I, I have no problem signing off on it now because it's smaller. It's back. I just want to bring it to the board's attention. Okay. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Okay. Um, item eight on the agenda. <clears throat> we'll keep discussing this, but uh, ongoing review of zoning regs pertaining to adaptive reuse of non-conforming barns and accessory apartments. And this is something we started looking into uh, back in January. Um, we'll take non-conforming barns. Um, I just kind of kicked this around in my own head. A lot of these barns are perpendicular to the highway, the road. So the non-conforming portion and quite a few of these large barns is the, the smaller portion. And so it's a 120 foot barn and there's actually 20 feet of it that's non-conforming and 100 feet of it, that same barn is behind the 50 foot setback and is conforming. And I wasn't sure if the commission thought that this would be helpful to owners um, to allow them to use the conforming portion for other uses. Right now, a non-conforming building can only be used for its intention and storage. So if it was a, a farm building, a, it can be used for farming or storage. It can't, it's not supposed to be converted to uh, studios or apartments. And I wasn't sure if the commission wanted to look into addressing the conforming portion of these barns and allowing the people to do something with them. Um, uh, this is Kim Tester. Um, I think that the zoning regulations need to come up to modern times. And because those properties aren't necessarily farming any longer, that the barn will go into disrepair unless it's allowed to um, be upgraded and brought into some sort of um, use that the current property owners will be able to manage and move forward with. Right, that's kind of what my feelings are the same, that uh, to save some of these barns and it would create, because I'm going all the way to accessory apartments in the conforming portion of the barn. Um, to, to allow people to, to uh, utilize that structure, the conforming portion. The non-conforming portion of that barn has got to be left just as it is, storage or nothing. Jim, Jim Al Dave Miller. Uh, Alan, first, then Dave. Um, seems to me... <clears throat> it, well, why not just allow the entire barn to be put, in, put to a different use? Because my concern on the entire barn, a lot of the portions that are uh, with within the fifty foot setback, some of yeah. these are like ten feet from the road. I understand that, but 
what are there 20 buildings 30 buildings in the entire town or 50 or I'm, oh we don't i don't have a number i yeah. just thought there is a safety issue on allowing the non-conforming portion which is close to the road i was trying to avoid a safety issue of having that become used for you know population people living or studio you worried about a truck plowing into the thing or pretty much yeah yeah well, I, I i see whole communities uh, where all of the houses are three feet from the from the road uh, well we're trying to avoid that in our community yeah but i, I, I it seems to me a barn if you were to convert a barn I, I see some barns in when I drive along and that are very close to the road and there are houses and people have the houses been that close to the road for 150 years. And, but but you know, currently, currently to me, a setback is sacred. And there's a reason we have a 50 foot setback and I don't want to. I understand the reason, but that's for new construction, but this is a, an existing building. And uh, if they Correct. want to turn it into a um, dance hall or a, a house, I mean, uh, whatever. Uh, well, there's there's other structures too that when I said some of these barns are um, perpendicular, I also have a barn up on Bosford Hill that's parallel with the road. The barn is close to 170 feet long. The entire structure is within 50 feet of the road. Yeah. But and if people want to turn that into a house and live that close to the road, I am. Um, no. I don't Can't know. Do it'd, it'd be a half of nice house. It'd be big. <laughs> Can't do that. This one, this one I'm talking about is about eight feet from the side of the road. Hmm. Wouldn't even have room to park there safely. But I think if we're going to allow either, we got to stick with our the conforming portion. And the other thing, some of the barns that my personal feeling is it's got to have at least 50% conforming. Because it's only, if it's got 60% non-conforming and 40% conforming, it's not worth going there. I want the, the barn to have the majority of it um, conforming and then we'll allow them to use the majority. Just my thoughts. Okay. Yep. Um, I, uh, Jim, this is Elaine. I, I think we've been just, we've kicked this around for a couple of months, right? Top this topic. Well, we started in January, then it, um, it lost right. us in March, April. Okay. But, well, uh, I'm in favor of discussing it. You know, just to allow them to use, um, the part to me, it's important. The part that is conforming to give them some leeway to use that for whatever they want to use it for. Anyway, so that's where we're at with that. And I, next month, I want to, and Bill, you can weigh in on this, my, uh, my, prof my building representative, uh, you know, help us out with your thoughts. Well, my concern would be the 100 foot barn, there aren't many. And uh, my concern would be the, uh, um, sensitivity to the side of those, because those are people, those are good houses. Uh, the road doesn't really care how close the structure is to it is already there. So, but I keep reoccurring in my mind, your 170 foot structure, that's quite a dynamic piece of, uh, structure alongside the road, it could be a living structure. And um, so I'm, I, I, I kind of have mixed emotions about it. Uh, I think that, well, as I can say, uh, I'm hung up on the fact that side limits are sacred. The street is also a sacred, but it's not sacred personally. It's just sacred to a road. And the road doesn't really have any opinion or feeling for what's happening in the structure. If safety is an issue, then that can't be argued. Right. You know, a lot of these are very close to, especially in winter, you're plowing snow, you're plowing the... <coughs> This one structure I have, the snowbank goes right up to the barn. Well, that's true. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot of things that enter into it. The 50 foot is there for a very good reason. Yeah, but that 50 foot, that that no, that a snow plow would still be against the building. That would have nothing to do with what's inside the barn. 
No, it make it harder to get out. So I'm just, I really believe this, the side light, the side, light, the side light back should be really sacred. And, Definitely. Um, and if you use the 50% that you're talking about, then that long building that you have could never be anything but a barn. I can't understand you that well. If, we'll talk. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk. I can't. There's background somewhere. Anyway, um, Dave's phone. Okay. The other one, the other one I want to mute yours, this mute your phone, and then we hear a lot of background noise for you. Um, whose phone is like him? Dave. Oh, yeah, that's right. It is. Uh, one last thing, uh, Along those lines is the accessory apartments and the size, um, what do we want to call the uh, proportion? Proportion, ratio. Yeah. Rate size ratio to the, the uh, residents, the primary residents and the accessory has to be 50% of the primary. Up, up to 50. Uh, uh, yes. yeah, yeah yeah this is elaine here i just want to let you know i was absent last month but not only did i read the minutes but i listened to the entire audio so um it sounds very complicated um well right now i can put it simply my house at home is 1800 square feet my accessory can't be bigger than nine correct Okay, so then and I'm not the gonna, way it is currently, yeah. Yeah, I can't I'm not gonna build an accessory apartment on my property out you know, separate from the primary, a separate living because uh, I can only go to nine hundred square feet. So then if I wanted to change and build a primary and call my eighteen hundred accessory, my primary's gotta be thirty six hundred square feet. So mm -hmm. anybody with a house around eighteen to twenty two hundred square feet is out of luck. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to change that to where I can I have 1,800 square foot house. I would like to build another 1,800 square foot house or a 15 or whatever. Right. I hear you. That's where yeah. I'm going with this. And there again, to create more options for housing. Well, I had some questions because I listened to Kim's remarks about the, um, the, the footprint space versus the square footage. So I was a little, that was interesting. Yeah, this is Kim. So when my husband and I built our house, uh, the regulations at the time said uh, footprint. So they were amended later on to say square footage. So when we did it, we have a 1500 square foot little house that we were in and then we wanted to build a primary and we had to build a 3000 square foot house. And mm -hmm. you know, there's, it's, we're kicking ourselves now, but, um, and that was a stretch that was really hard for us to do. And so I think that the regulation as it stands now is very limiting and it's, it's unfair. Mm -hmm. As Jim said, who have houses that are within the 1500 or whatever, cause it's too small or it's too big. Mm -hmm. um, to, um, a proposal to John, um, John, I don't know if you have that. I don't think it made it into the um, into our packet, but um, for the email I sent with the proposed language for. No, John, no, Kim, I didn't get that. Oh, yeah. I, okay. Kim, definitely send that, send your proposal in so we can all see it. Yeah, please, uh, John, anyone, anyone has an idea, throw it in yeah. there, put it in the hopper. Yeah. That's the that's the problem we want to solve. Any way you folks think we can get to it, read what we have on the books now, and see what we can do to make it so the accessory and the primary don't have to be that far apart. Mm -hmm. Jim, this is Bill. Elaine's made a good point. It's a very complicated thing the way it is now. If we try and rework it and change it, it's still going to be complicated. John, I don't know. In my random research of other towns, John Cody, uh, you've probably done some too. Lots of towns have a maximum size. A maximum size of 1,600 or 1,800 feet, period. That's the maximum size. 
and it does say the, the accessory building has to be smaller than the main house. But if we just, if we just had a maximum size. Of, okay. Of, Bill, Bill that, that sounds sensible to me. Just up, you yeah. can build up to 90, well, let's say 90% of the original house or 95%. And Jim, Dave Miller. Yeah. I, I think that, Alan, you're missing the point. I think they just have a size on the accessory building, regardless of the size of the primary residence. Just pick a size that, that, that would fit the, um, you I'm, know, what everyone would be a good accessory size building, something 1,300 square feet, 1,200 square feet. And, um, 1,800 square feet. All right, 1,800 square feet. That's I, fine. I agree. I think we just put a size on it. It's John, John Cody. That's, that's a good idea. I, I like it. I like that a lot. It's very simple. And, uh, just, yeah. I, I did, uh, I think it was uh, Colwell Banker. They, I think they have a group called Hows, H-O-U-Z-Z. -Z. And they did a lot of research on this. And they, they said, that, and they call it their uh, Goldilocks house, ideal size house for family of four. Yeah. Yeah. Is feet. So, what was that again? 1800? The average size house, ideal house for a family of four with two dogs, is 16 to 1800 feet. That sounds, that sounds realistic, reasonable. Yeah. I'll go with 18. You could say 17. You know, they said 16, 18, but yeah. that sounds fair and reasonable and very simple. Yep. That would help. That would help encourage people to do something like that. Yeah, and there would never be a huge structure built again. Exactly. But it would be a decent so size. What's, yeah. what's wrong with two 1,600-foot houses? Yeah, I mean, John, that's, it's clean. There, there's no difference. There's no gray area with that. And well, this, is, this is also just for rentals. These aren't to be sold. These are rentals. Oh, no, it's not to be a subdivision. Oh, it's not a yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a very rentable size. Yep. Well, well, the the, the regulation is my understanding that you can't rent both units out. That an owner has to be in one unit, and the secondary unit you can do whatever you want with. Correct. Okay. That that we might look into as well. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it, this is Elaine. Um, that's, that's a lot to, to break off and chew at the same time, because that really changes the, it changes what we've got completely. And, and it could potentially pose a problem if there, if it's not a residence, um, if there's not a, a res residence of the owner. All right, well, let's, um, I mean, this, this COVID was a perfect example. Um, anybody in Roxbury could have rented their house out for three months. Um, so what's your let's point? seriously go forward with the size of the accessory house. Um, 17, 18, I don't think we need to go over 18. Um, and see how that looks written into our regs to allow that to go forward and happen. Then we'll take another step from there. Keep it simple is the name of the way to do things. I'm all for that, yep. Three. All right, we'll bring that back next month and something in writing that we can all look at. Um, chairman's report, that's pretty much Pretty much it, just those two issues <clears throat> for me. Um, it's always thinking on uh, housing and what we can do to encourage uh, diversity in housing. All right, uh, anything else? Um, we've been on here for a while. Um, anything else uh, the commission wants to bring up? I have one thing, this is Kim. Um, and then I think uh, with the changes that we've made time with the uh, 
uh, apartment in the house and the apartment in this building. We should really, really look at the guest house regulation, which I think is obsolete. Um, the guest house, uh, I think that once people are, I think a lot of those guest houses have kitchens in them now and all of it is apartments. I think uh, it's something to think about and to maybe remove that proposal to remove the guest house regulation. Uh, I, John, look I agree with that, Kim. Actually, a lot of times when these people come in for a guest house, I tell them to just go for the apartment. It's, it's a hell of a lot easier. You know, when they throw um, most people are receptive to that. Um, that would be nice to get rid of that because that is a lingering nightmare. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's talk. Look at that. I've got to look at the rig myself. Guest houses. I. It, they just don't have kitchens, correct? That's there, correct. Jim. It's just a, a size, a you know, size the limitation. Microwave and all that, but no stove. How about the size of a guest house? Uh, no. Nothing. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, there is. There is. Um. It, Jim, you stomped me. I don't know if there is. There's because about, it's odd uh, that we have a size on the accessory apartment, but not on a guest house. Exactly. I mean, it's always been small. The only thing that's coming to me is a special permit for car that just got approved, which has the entertainment room. It didn't just get approved last year, several years ago. I don't think we have a size restriction on guest house. Yeah, we, can, we can, this is Kim, we can take a look at that and talk about it next time. Yeah. yeah well, we just All right. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, if we're all good, uh, I'll. This is Elaine. I make a motion to wish Karen and Eddie a happy birthday tomorrow. <laughs> happy birthday, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do I have to write that in? <laughs> All right, I think we're good. Um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, this is Kim Tester, I motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, second. Elaine Curley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good Thank month. You, uh, Bye. Happy birthday, Elaine. Happy Thank birthday. You. Happy birthday, Thank you. Good meeting. Thank you. Right